everyone, Kyle Erickson here. So WWDC is wrapped up and I've got my head wrapped around the new MacBook Air with the M2 chip in it after watching the keynote and checking out a lot of the info that we've seen trickle out over the last week or so. And I thought it would be kind of interesting to talk about it in comparison to the 2020 M1 Air that I have here that's still in the current Mac lineup and just some performance stuff as it relates to some of the models above this. Uh, so let's just dive right in. Uh, first, I want to talk about the most obvious change, that being the design, which was a much needed refresh in my opinion. Uh, the Air moved away from the classic wedge style design that has always been a part of the MacBook Air, and it now kind of resembles the newer MacBook Pros. Uh, everything has straight edges and flat surfaces. You have MagSafe brought back along the side, which is really nice on a machine like this where you only have two ports. Uh, I know in the past on this M1 Air, I've always needed a hub if I have an external display hooked up and I was charging, so that should help alleviate some of those issues. The M2 Air is also a touch thinner than the M1 variant with it being 0.44 inches thick versus 0.63 on the thickest part of the M1. And the newest version is also a tad lighter at 2.7 pounds instead of 2.8. Uh, you've also got an updated keyboard with a full-sized function row, just like on the new Pros. It just doesn't have the black backing like on the Pros do. Uh, I love the keyboard on the MacBook Pro, so absolutely no complaints there. Uh, I think we're all generally happy with the keyboard progression on Mac since that whole butterfly keyboard debacle. Uh, you've got some new colors here as well with Midnight and Starlight. And then just your regular space gray and silver like the M1 version has. I'll probably grab a starlight version because that's what I've bought on all my other Apple devices. And just a note there, I will be picking one of these up to review when they are available. So if you want to check that out, make sure you're subscribed. The most noticeable change for me design wise would have to be that display. Uh, again, very much resembles that of the MacBook Pros with the notch. Uh, you've got thinner bezel, so more screen real estate at 13.6 inches instead of 13.3 on the M1 Air. And it does have 500 nits brightness and 1 billion colors to match the 13 inch MacBook Pro. That 0.3 inches of extra screen real estate might not seem like that much, but I know after working a lot of the time on my 16 inch and then coming back to the 13, it does feel pretty tiny. So I do think that little bit of extra is a welcome addition. As far as that notch goes, I've had that on my 16 inch MacBook Pro for a while and it doesn't really bother me at all. Uh, the nice thing is that notch does house the new 1080p webcam that replaces that old 720p potato camera that was in the M1, which is nice to see. I think as far as the design and the build of this machine, everything here is a big win and what you'd expect to see in a version bump. Uh, performance wise though is when things get a little bit less clear to me and that's not because I don't think that the M2 isn't a huge upgrade over the M1. Uh, there are some noticeable performance gains there. You have 100 gigabytes per second unified memory bandwidth so that's twice as fast as the M1 and it's 50% slower than the M1 Pro so it's slotting right in the middle there. You have 10 GPU cores available instead of the 8 that you get on the M1 and you have memory available up to 24 gigs of RAM on the M2 which is a bump from 16 on the last gen. Uh, those are all solid specs and will play a hand in big performance gains. What we don't really know yet is just how much faster it is in the real world because Apple isn't exactly crystal clear on some of these performance claims, which I think is pretty common for any manufacturer. It is interesting to me in just how Apple makes their comparisons. I don't know if anyone else notices this, but a lot of the time Apple will shy away from making a lot of direct comparisons between how much faster a new machine or chip is versus a current model in their lineup. If you go back and watch the October M1 Pro and Max keynote, you'll see that there are a lot of comparisons between the M1 Pro and Max and the old Intel machine but not really that much with the regular M1. Whereas with the M2, because I think it's sort of replacing the M1, you do see a lot of those direct comparisons. I also noticed some weird discrepancies between how much faster they claim the M1 Pro is over the M1 and how much faster the M2 is over the M1. 
Uh, the numbers don't exactly line up in some instances, and that's why I think it's just important to expect this to be faster, but not put a lot of stock in the actual numbers they're throwing out in the keynote. In any case, I'm sure that it will be faster. It also has an upgraded media engine that's more along the lines of the Pro Machines with a higher bandwidth media decoder that should improve video editing performance, which is good for someone like me. But overall, I think that we can expect this to slot right in the middle of an M1 and an M1 Pro. Another thing that will be kind of a wait and see until reviewers can get their hands on these is anything related to audio. It does sound like it's improved with a four speaker setup versus the stereo speakers that were in the M1 Air. It's supposed to have support for spatial audio and the headphone jack now has support for high impedance headphones. Some things are still the same on this machine and the last gen uh, wireless support, still Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. It is a little bit disappointing that this didn't progress at all with this having kind of a lack of ports. I think a lot of people are likely to use more wireless devices with this, but that is a pretty small issue. Uh, it's still supposed to have the same great battery life that's in the M1 Air as well. So 18 hours video playback and 15 hours of web browsing. Uh, you still have a 30 watt charger included with this, unless you upgrade to the 10 core GPU and a 512 gig SSD, where you will get that new 35 watt dual USB port adapter and it does support fast charging up to 67 watts if you move up to the highest available charger where you can also get 50% battery in 30 minutes or so. So great battery life which is what we're used to seeing on these laptops. The M2 MacBook Air starts at $1199 and for me sure that's only a $200 bump over the last gen and with reasonable upgrades. But I think if you really want to make this worth your while with this machine, at least performance wise, you probably want to spend at least $1499 to get the extra GPU cores and more RAM, especially if you already have an M1 of some kind. It just doesn't seem like a big bump otherwise. The $1499 option would slot in at $500 more than the previous gen base M1 Air and $500 below the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro, which makes sense to me. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed we didn't see an M2 Mac Mini, but if you wish in one hand and sh** in the other, which one do you think you'll have the most of? Curious to know how everyone else is feeling about this machine. Uh, are you picking one up? Are you waiting? Are you selling all of your electronics to live in the forest and become one with nature? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, I will be picking one of these up, so look for that in the near future. Uh, slap that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more tech-related content, or if you think that we may have been switched at birth and went home with the wrong parents. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.